good and healthy relationships affect how we feel as individuals, how we interact with one another, and how we live together as a community. In this day and age, when digital technology has become an intrinsic part of our lives, the rules of engagement for relationships is completely redefined. I can see how technology has enhanced our lives in many different ways. But for every new thing that we create or adopt, there are consequences and implications as well. My fear is that digital technology is slowly eroding the relationships that we have with one another. And this is what I would like to talk about today. I cannot tell you how technology is going to evolve over time, but we all know how much each of us is reliant on digital technology and our digital devices. If this is here to stay, the question we need to ask ourselves is, how are we going to live with technology so that it does not take over our lives and turn us into human robots? In 2001, Mark Prenzi coined the terms digital native and digital immigrant. I did not grow up with computers and I had to learn about how to use the computers, how to navigate through the internet, and so that makes me a digital immigrant. And for a vast majority of you sitting in the audience, I would call you digital natives because you probably grew up with technology and was acquainted with it at an early age. And so this brings me to a little story about macarons. There's this friend of mine who loves eating macarons. And so the first time when I gave him a box of macarons, he opened the box, placed the card of the shop's name on it, and snapped. This is the picture he took of that box of macarons, of course with all the fancy filters that he used on his mobile phone. And then, you know, the next time, just recently actually, you know, I gave him another box of macarons. But before I talk about that, actually, you know how we are with the way we want to showcase what we do with our devices, right? Whenever there's something interesting that you want to tell people about, you take a picture and then you compose a caption, tag your friend and post it on Facebook or Instagram. And so that was what he did then. Anyway, back to just recently when I gave him another box of macarons. So what he did this time was, he slowly and carefully opened that box of macarons. You know, because macarons are very delicate. So he was careful not to damage them or squash them. And then I was expecting that he would take a photo like what he did the last time. And when he did not, I thought to myself, hmm, now that's strange. So then he proceeded excitedly to sever the macarons, and I could see his curious expression as he took each bite. And then delighting at discovering the flavors as he finished each macaron. And then he reached out for the last macaron, and he turned to me looking rather disappointed. And he said, I forgot to take a photo. I was so amused by that because I could see how much he was engaged and engrossed in the entire experience of eating macarons because he forgot to take a picture. But he insisted he, that he could have captured the moment in a photo. But we all know how it is when you are so preoccupied with taking the best picture to post online, the moment will be lost. And that's how it is with most of us as well. And it is so important that we are able to be present in the here and now in order to engage and connect better with ourselves instead of our devices. It probably takes a little bit of practice to do that because it does not come very naturally for most of us. And so some of the ways we might be able to do that, of course, would be to slow down, to pause, and to pay attention to some of your thoughts and your emotions at that time. This does not only help us connect with ourselves as individuals, it also helps us be present with the people around us. And this brings me to another little story of my nine-year-old son. One day he asked me, 
You mean when you were a child, there were no iPhones and iPads, just a television? And yeah, I told him, yeah, no iPhones and iPads, just a television. And he looked like he felt really sorry for me. He said, you must have been really bored. In fact, I don't remember feeling all that bored. There were so many things that I could do with my time as a child. And these were some of the things that I used to do when I was growing up. I played with five stones, zero point. Maybe some of you don't know what these are, but let me just run through them. And then I used to play catching and hide and seek with my friends, go to the playground and play on the seesaw, on the slides, on the swings. And I love making origami and also piecing together jigsaw puzzles. So these days, many of us do not actually engage in so many different activities. And whether you are a digital native or digital immigrant, you will probably instinctively reach out for your mobile device and start texting, WhatsApping, Facebooking, Instagramming, playing online games, or whatever that you can think of. And this is what happens to us when we are so preoccupied with our devices that we tend to lose consciousness of everything or almost everything that is happening around us. And the only thing that has your attention is probably the computer screen in front of you or the device that you hold in your hands. And it is not so bad if you are on your own because you are free to do whatever you want with your time. But the problem is, how much time are you going to spend online and that it may distract you from the things that you need to do with your time? Personally, I'm also guilty of that. When I'm online with my devices, I put off things that I need to do, like household chores, grocery shopping, work, meal times, bedtime, and for some of you, study time. And so one of my bedtime rituals, actually, is to lie in bed before I go to bed, you know? And then I'll scroll through all my news feeds on my social media. I'll check my email and all that. I'll do that in bed, like this, lying down in bed. And there was this night when my younger son came into the bedroom and he asked me, I thought you were asleep. Why are you reading in the dark? Isn't it bad for your eyes? I love the way my sons remind me that I should practice what I preach. And so this is what technology does to us. They take time away from what we are supposed to do. And as it is living in a city, makes us already so busy. There are so many things that we've got to do. And digital technology, in a way, although it has actually automated many of the processes that we need to do in the past, which was time-consuming and labor-intensive, but these days, because of all the different inventions and innovations that they have, they have made us even busier. And if you look at the Chinese word for busy, it is made up of the words heart, and to die. Isn't it interesting how the Chinese word gives us so much insight about what busyness does to us? Our heart dies. And it is no wonder that living in the city, living a busy life with digital technology especially, affects our relationships so much. So we may think that it is not so bad with social media, because we are able to connect and communicate with one another. In some ways, it is kind of true because social media actually helps us to connect with one another and reach out to more people. And we can also communicate with one another. But what we don't realize is that social media doesn't actually have the depth of communication and connection that the real world communication has. And that's partly because Online communication is very two-dimensional and one-directional. There is no tone of voice, no body language, no non-verbal cues, no all, all these things that you would have in a real-world connection and communication. And so that's what online communication is lacking. We can see that it cannot replace actual human-to-human -human interaction, even though it may be a close approximate and may even mimic real-world communication and interaction. 
but it is still not the same. The trouble is that if online communication is something that we engage in so often, you might actually run the risk of losing the ability to interact with people in the real world. And I think that maybe the younger generation may actually need to learn basic social skills and basic conversational skills in schools these days, because many of them are also lacking that ability. I remember last month when I was talking to some of the fathers, because I run a, father, a group for fathers as well, and there's this father who shared that he attended his son's school event and he came across a student who spoke eloquently and confidently during his speech. And after the speech, he approached this student and the student was visibly awkward, had difficulty maintaining eye contact and couldn't quite carry on a simple conversation because he obviously had no script to follow. And this is the potential tragedy of our digital natives. However, as a digital immigrant myself, I did not fare any better. I was struck by a different tragedy. Two years ago, during a dinner with some friends, my younger son, who was five at that time, told them enthusiastically, my mother is always on her iPad. Of course, I immediately denied it. No, I'm not. But you know, in his most innocent and honest and childlike way, he said, yes, you are. You use the iPad all the time. <sighs> Clearly, he was right, and I was embarrassed. I tell parents that they should spend quality time with their children, and here I am making exactly that same mistake paying more attention to my devices than my children. It was certainly a wake-up call for me, and it led me to think how I'm going to use my devices differently. In that same year, I came up with this idea called Project Connect, and I invited all my Facebook friends on it. You know how the social media is, there are good parts to it, and so this was one of the good parts, that I was able to reach out to people on Facebook. And then I created this thing called Project Connect, which I got the idea from Earth Hour. Earth Hour is where you dedicate one, of one hour of your time in order to raise awareness that there is a need to take action for climate change. And for Project Connect, it is to disconnect from your devices and to spend uninterrupted quality time with the people who matter. And so to all my friends who participated in this, I gave them these instructions, that they should make a date with their loved one, and they should set aside at least an hour of their time in which that they will switch off their devices or turn them off, and then take time to do whatever that they want together, like taking a walk in the park, have a picnic by the beach, share a meal together, play an interactive sport, or board game, or chat, or whatever that they can think of. So there were about 100 of them who participated in it, and I asked them to share some of their thoughts and their experiences on the Facebook page. And these were some of their responses. One lady shared, I had a really simple dinner with my mother, and we talked about work and life. We talked about so many different things that we usually did not have time for. A father shared that he played in the pool with his daughter and he chatted with his wife by the poolside. He even called this Stone Age communication. And then a friend shared, this exercise proved to be useful because I spent the time going around Singapore on the bus with my dearest girlfriend and we went around shopping malls and even caught a movie. My girlfriend's endorsement to this project her boyfriend is normal at last. And so you can see that this cannot be confined just to a one-hour exercise that I initiated at that point. It has to be something that we consciously and deliberately do from time to time in order to spend time with the people who matter and our friends that we interact with. So the next time when you are about to send a text message, or wish a friend happy birthday on Facebook, 
why not pick up the phone and call this friend and have a conversation with him or her, which you probably may not have had in a long time. Or better still, make an appointment to meet up and chat over coffee or a simple meal or share an activity together. So the question is, if digital technology and digital devices is so detrimental to our relationships, shouldn't we just delete it all from our lives? Actually, we can't and we probably won't. And this is because the digi digital technology and all our devices were created to serve a purpose. They were created to serve us and not to take a life of its own. And so all of you here, and all of us here rather, need to actually take stock of how you use digital technology and how you interact with the people who matter around you. So before I end this talk, let me walk you through a little exercise. Think of one person who matters a lot to you in your life. When was the last time you felt connected with this person and was able to be present in that experience and enjoy his or her company. How much time do you spend with this person online? And how much time do you spend with this person offline? Think about some of the different things that you may be able to do in order to enrich your relationship with this person online, like using online resources and so on, and think about some of the different things that you might be able to do in order to engage this person offline. So you may not have all the answers right now, but it is important to have these thoughts in mind. And so after this talk, you would be able to find an opportunity to meet up with this person and have a conversation and decide what are some of the things both of you can do differently to enrich your relationship better online and offline. I always believe that each one of us is able to influence the people that we interact with and these people that we interact with, we will also be able to influence other people that they interact with. And so I shall close with one of my favorite quotes from Cloud Atlas. Our lives are not our own. We are bound to others, past and present. And by each crime and every kindness, we birth our future. Thank you.